Well, we are now joined by Associate Professor of Public Policy at uh, Pepperdine, Michael Shires. Michael, thank you so much uh, for being here again with us. Well, That's let's uh, get right to tonight's uh, big uh, issue, if you will. The winner here on the GOP side is Ted Cruz, of course. But let's talk about what some say may, may be the biggest night, or the, rather the biggest loser, which would be Donald Trump. His momentum seems to be heading in the wrong direction. His delegate count right now is at 737, Cruz at 505. So if you go with the current polls and the 17 or so races left, it appears that he might fall short at about 1,100 and maybe 90, 44 shy. So is this going to be contested in the convention? Well, you know, he has to win 60, 62 percent of the rest right. of the delegates. That's an uphill battle. There are some all-or-nothing states, but they're likely to break both ways. So I mean, it, it looks more and more like we might have a contested convention. In two weeks, when New York unfolds, we'll see how much he wins by in New York. And California at 172 delegates is the biggest prize yet to, 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 it to be taken. It is. Right? For better or worse, Californians are going to have a big say in how this turns out. Yeah. So, Michael, Ted Cruz, uh, the winner tonight, he's often said he's the only person who can beat Donald Trump. Uh, what do his chances look like now that we're going into, um, what, New York, where he's not expected to fare very well, right? Well, his odds of winning on the first ballot are almost zero in terms of the convention. He can stop Donald Trump from getting the nomination. His win in, in Wisconsin tonight was a lot bigger than anybody expected. Uh, we don't know if that's because Donald Trump did himself a lot of damage this week with some of his comments or because people are starting to consolidate around Ted Cruz. If Donald Trump wins by less, you know, wins less than 50 percent of the vote in New York in a couple weeks, we'll get a sense of which way that's going. All right, so let's talk about the longest of long shots, John Kasich. Seems to be going nowhere. Not a, he has fewer delegates than Marco Rubio, who dropped out a month, a month ago. What's his strategy? What, what is this really all about? Well, he wants to be there. He thinks that if he's at the table when they go to the convention, if Donald Trump fails in the first ballot, that he will be the name that comes forward in the second ballot. Now, for that to happen, he's got to win a state between now and then. There aren't any that look good for him. So maybe his best chance would be as Donald Trump's vice president in some sort of a brokered deal in the second ballot. Very interesting. Okay. Let's talk about the Democratic side, of course, Michael. Now, we're, despite having a negative day in the media after that interview that you alluded to, Dave, related to Bernie Sanders and the Daily News that came out, he did have that victory today, making it seven of the last eight. So where does he stand? This is some big momentum for Sanders going forward. Is he, is he viable or even more at this point in time? Well, I've learned never to say never. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, Hillary Clinton was supposed to win the nomination in 2008, oh, so and that relax. didn't unfold the way she expected. Uh, going into the Northeast, it's home turf for both of them. There's a college on every corner in New England. And That's college kids are going 80-20 for Bernie yeah. Sanders. Yeah. So if turnout is good from that group, he might make New York very close. He might even pull off some upsets in that region. He's still got a long ways to go to overcome the delegate lead that she picked up in the South, though. Well, but Hillary Clinton obviously still leading uh, Bernie Sanders and delegates. In fact, she was on The View today, and she said that she has two million more votes than, than Sanders during this election. So, of course, we're coming to New York. Uh, should it be an easy win for her? And how concerned should she be that he's already won, you know, seven out of eight? Well, she should be very concerned. She should have won some of those, like Wisconsin, probably. Uh, the fact that he's still in the campaign, I mean, she wants him to go away so she can focus on what she sees as the mess on the Republican side. And she can't do that. She has to keep spending money. She has to keep organizing her workers. She has to keep focusing on Bernie Sanders. So her staying in this is going to affect her for a while. Now, we talked a little bit about this during the commercial break, but do you remember the last time where both conventions were contested? Uh, well, it's got to be in the 19th century. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. It's got to, you know, not in modern history, certainly. Right. Uh, yeah. This is going to be a, a messy campaign for the next two months. How old are you that you can remember that? <laughs> century? It's pretty good. So, here, so here's a big question to me is, I'm hearing talk now for the first time in this campaign, we could have two open conventions on, mm -hmm. on, for each party. What are the odds? Is that a possibility now? It's a long shot on the Democratic side. It, it, it's conceivable if Bernie Sanders were to win New York and somehow come from behind and, you know, Connecticut and Rhode Island and a bunch of those northeastern states and then do really well in California, he has a heck of a case to make on the convention floor. Yeah. I won all these states. I won the two most populous states. Yeah. You've got to go with me. Let's talk about Cruz tonight. He was the big winner in Wisconsin. Was this an anti-Trump vote, or is this just people trying out Cruz for size here when it came to him winning Wisconsin tonight? Well, you know, two months ago, Trump was up by 10 points in Wisconsin. So clearly there's been a shift in the dynamics in the state. Um, we really don't know the answer to that question. Like I said, I think New York's going to be our best metric in two weeks because then we'll have a sense of did Trump lose, you know, if Trump only yeah. gets 40% of the vote, that tells you there's an anti-Trump movement going on. 
So I, I think we're going to have to wait a couple weeks to get the answer of what exactly happened. We know people are really unhappy with all of the candidates. At they this really point. are, aren't they? Yeah. All right, Dave and Michael, thank you so much. They just keep on making it interesting for us, don't they? <laughs> yes, they okay, do. Okay, we'll talk to you guys again soon.